Hi everyone, hopefully we're live. It's Mark Fernandez here. The good evening. You're probably watching strictly at the moment, but if I can peel you away, fun. Fun. <laughs> you away from the television, I thought we'd do a spontaneous live. So um, lives are something that I do on a regular basis for my VIP groups. If you're partaking in the big white people, just have a call. I just yeah, I could just see that Suzanne was trying to get out. Don't be shy. Yes, okay, might actually, but no, okay. So, lives are something that I do for my VIP groups on a regular basis. If you're interested in joining my VIP groups, just go to Kamal Fernandes online training. This is a plug, is it? Yeah. Shameless plug. Um, and you can find out a little bit more about that and join my VIPs. So, I thought this would be a really, this was a spontaneous um, idea to do a live with uh, my good friend Ryan Cole, who owns this fantastic facility, Eye to Eye in Bristol. Um, and she does dog training, and she does television work, uh, and she owns a Hunterway, a German Shepherd, as, and a, a thing, a thing, who's a pound type thing. Yeah. Um, so, and Riley's um, training her German Shepherd for Mondia Ring. And this is my friend Suzanne, who we know nothing about. Apparently, she wants to be ambiguous. Um, but this is my friend <laughs> Suzanne Jaffa. Um, anybody that knows Suzanne will know that she's this is very much out of her comfort zone to, um, to do this live. But those of you that don't know Suzanne, Suzanne has had, shall I say, a little bit of success with um, Australian shepherds making. Um, okay. Two, yeah. One up to a dual one champion. Down. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, to, uh, another one to be a champion, yeah. a, 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 a working trials champion, and a cru one cross from the Australian Shepherd. So the reason why I thought it would be interesting to have this conversation, because we're all embarking on a journey <laughs> with um, getting people coming. Yeah, we're uh, okay. Watching us. Uh, we're all, <laughs> you're famous, Suzanne. No. We're no. all embarking on a journey to a new sport with dogs that um, may not be um, the dogs that you would assume would be best suited to that particular discipline. Um, and it was to really, we've been training today and we've been talking about the, um, the respective journeys that we're all having and the pros and cons of having a dog that may not be the dog that you would associate with that particular sport. So for example, I'm training my boxer to hopefully do IGP or IPO. Suzanne's um, got a young Australian Shepherd who she's um, starting her, uh, her training with in Mondio Ring, and Bryony's doing it with a German Shepherd, um, which is a new sport to Bryony. And um, so it's all we're all in the same boat that a lot of you are starting a new journey into either a sport, and we thought we'd challenge ourselves even further by choosing by choosing breeds or dogs that you wouldn't. Um, associate with that respective discipline as your first port call. So for example, the sport I'm endeavouring to do, the dogs that are dominant in that are definitely Malinois and German Shepherds, um, and I would say that is probably the same, certain Malinois for Mondio. Um, but for some crazy reason we thought we'd, we'd try different breeds. Seems like a good yeah, idea. Yeah. Time. <laughs> yeah. um, but the, both my sisters, myself and Suzanne have competed in convenience with other breeds of dogs. And I think there is definitely um, challenges that are associated with having dogs that aren't predisposed to more traditional approaches of training. Um, and that isn't about judgment, it's, it's certainly, it's just about the topic of conversation. Um, so, um, you're starting your journey, Suzanne, with your puppy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't look so <laughs> No, um, I need a gym and toilet. What, what would you, so having been down a path with a dog that a breed of dog that isn't associated with the sport. What is what is the things that you can say to people watching um, that are is part of that process? So, um, in your experience, what would you say are the, the the differences between? Because you also had a colleague that you did a business with, believe yeah. it or not. Yeah. Um, and what would you say would be the biggest things that are different from uh, for training an other breed of dog? Then? What would you say is the difference? I can think of one that they definitely is a, 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 that I can think of, which is repetition. So I think that a big thing for other breeds of dogs is they don't do well with multitudes of repetitions, which is often an approach taken to train 
more um, dogs that I, I like. My border collies, definitely. For example, I did a live yesterday and I did numerous repetitions with one of my dogs and my boxer would never have coped with that level of repetition. Would you say that the same with your Aussies? And Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So how would you, what would be another example and how would you then, what would be the process you would go through to, to deal with that and to create a dog that could cope with repetitions? I don't train to cope with repetitions. So I, I, I train short, bursts of yep. training yep. Um, and once he's got it right once or twice I move on and do something different so the, the training session might only last five minutes yep. but I keep changing the right. criteria or the behaviour that I'm training yep. I just want to repeat and repeat and repeat because even if you reward it every time it can feel that they've got it wrong yeah well they'll question you that's definitely but even that as a discussion point is the, the, the length of the training session like exactly the same thing I would most definitely with, for example, my other breed of dogs, with my German Spitz, with my Boxer, and even with my first Malinois, I would have to do very brief, short sessions, get what I want, and move on. If I, even if the dog was successful, and he did what I want, or he, yeah, it, they've all been him, and even my Labrador, um, they would definitely question me if you repeated it after they did it correctly, and it would then deteriorate the behavior. That's something that the Aussies definitely do. Yes. Yeah. So how do you then progress that from, your dog doing a singular behaviour, and then obviously the progression is to get the dog to do a long period of training. And bearing in mind, Mondio could be what, 45, 45, 45 minutes? How, how do you, as a trainer, overcome that with your breed of dog? Well, I wouldn't do it in training, I would do right. it by focus and attention and playing and being on side with me. Right. Or playing, being on side for a duration of time right. without actually having many behaviours. So the one dog wanted to interact with me by tricks and things like that. So he stayed in focus and engagement. And you would build that up? I would build that duration up. So as would you, so to, as a, sorry, interrupting you. As a think, as a planning, would you then aim to have your, your Aussie sustain that focus and attention for that a duration of really? time? For how long do you think that would be then with him, particularly on, in the... What, my puppy now? No, the long term. How long would you expect? Bear in mind your test on so with the dog all with, 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 I always want to be able to train them for double the time that they're going to need. So really if it's a ticket dog, it's 10 minutes. They're going to need to work more, so they need to be able to stay in focus and engagement for 20 minutes. Wow. So how about for what, the PD dog? Because the test could be PD could last 20 minutes, couldn't it? A, a yes, one. it could. But there's time, there's switch off time in between. Okay. You've got, you haven't got the continuity, so you've got time between where you finish one exercise. Right. Depends on whether it's a flowing round, if yes. it's a PD round, or, or you know. Um, but um, it's still, you've got the CNA, so that's a short bit. It's yeah. not very long, it's right. about 15 minutes. Yeah. The nose work, it's not very long, 20 minutes. Right. Um, and the PD, yeah, maybe 20 minutes, so they're short sections. It's interesting that you call up 20 minutes of, it, it's short, because in comparison to say, um, a, a lot of times I think that one of the pitfalls that I think that people train with other breeds is they just have to the war too frequently. Bearing in mind you're saying 20 minutes is easy. I would say one of the things that people definitely fall into, we discussed this afternoon about ratios of reinforcement, and um, sorry, schedules of reinforcement, how, by rewarding too often, you create actually a weaker response in the dog, don't you? Especially with the other breeds of dog, would you say? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 You want them keeping wanting more, and am I going to get rewarded now? Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not disappointed I wasn't rewarded. Yeah. Let's go and do something else, or do it again, and maybe I'm going to get rewarded. But you have to create that desire, yeah. gradually, gradually shaping it, so the dog isn't disappointed if you didn't get a reward. He's game on for the next behaviour or maybe another repetition, but you can't repeat those that just say so can't keep repeating. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so how about yourself, Bryony? As a, as a new to a sport and training a dog that um, hasn't been um, has been slower to develop and yeah. has taken a different approach, what would you say has been your uh, your learning experiences thus far with um, in particular? Learning to be more patient to wait for her to mature yeah. a little bit because yeah. I've not had a, a breed that is slow maturing 
like this before and yeah. everything else has come a bit quicker. Yeah. So being patient. Um, yeah, I think I've been, like we were talking about uh, intermittent reinforcement today, and I think I've been too, I expect a lot of her. Yeah. And sometimes I shouldn't do that thing. Right. Um, but yeah, it's been really interesting. I'm, I'm really pleased I chose this breed of dog. Okay. Um, because it's been a challenge for me training her. Yeah. And it's just put, like, it just, it's just so much more exciting. It's put loads of cars on the table. And she's yeah. just, she's, yes, yeah, she's not made for Mondio, mm -hmm. but she's more made for sport, whereas my previous dog wasn't. Yeah. Um, and it's hard trying to push her a dog into sport that she's going to make for us. Yeah. I think the interesting. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I think that there's an interesting, two interesting points there that you raise. One is about maturity levels. So it's not unusual for, you know, say for example, a board collie to be up, ready, and you know, well before a year. You know, I've had numerous board collies that have been physically and mentally capable of doing a substantial amount at a relatively young age. That isn't to say all border collies, and please let me be clear about that. Border collies are most definitely not. The, you know the, the, the perfect dog far from it but they definitely have a, um, a predisposition to you know the, the traits that are desirable for training um, whereas a two-year-old German Shepherd or a two-year-old Australian Shepherd or a two-year-old Boxer they are babies aren't they? They are yeah. mentally, yeah, well, they physically. Are. I think Aussies are but they actually mature quite quickly right. much quicker than a Shepherd right. but not as quick as a, a Collie but yeah. I think they mature quite quickly really. Really? Yeah. I Is that know. because you 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 asked of them, Suzanne? Who knows? Right. But I found that all of mine have matured quite quickly really. Really? Um yeah. I don't know about yours, but she's like she's nineteen months old now and she's still she's just had another growth spurt and stuff like that. So she's yeah. still really? she's like still physically being put together yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. which I have before because I had a, a giant breed before but I have a giant breed. Um, but is your boy going to grow? No. He's as high as he's going to be, as yeah. tall as he's going to be, but he's going to fill out. But do you dog. notice like stark changes in his. Well, I have since I last saw him a couple of weeks ago. He looks I think when you live with him all the time, you don't yeah, notice it. You don't notice it. I think there's definitely, um, with the breeds of dogs I have, certainly my boxer, although he's not a particularly tall boxer. He definitely physically took a long while to mature. Uh, I mean, he took a long while for his body to coordinate with his, uh, and even then, his once his body was together, and then his mentality took a little while to develop. Um, and I know my my Malamar, who was a very tall. He took. He was like at ten months old. He was just. He was still growing. Yeah. You know, he was bum high. I remember really struggling with heel work training because he's although he mentally had uh, you know a level of concentration, his body just didn't coordinate. And it was a case of then just, you know what, leaving it be. I think that's the big thing with certain breeds of dogs. You can't, even though you might want to progress your training, you have to go the way of dog. Yeah, wait, you have to wait, 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 wait. And that in itself can be frustrating. It is, I find that really frustrating. Yeah. Really yeah. frustrating, because I'm so impatient. Yeah. And that, that's been a learning curve, I think, having a Yeah. I think you definitely, certainly for, the big, big thing that I know with my other breeds of dogs is, um, they, I'm, you know, I can be a bit obsessive about my training, um, and I would like to train, you know, numerous times a day and do lots of little sessions, etc. It's time permitting, and I know that you can't do that with a dog like Patch. You have to do a little bit, you have to stop and regroup, and then you go back to it maybe the next day or the day after. He, he just didn't take the um, constant five minute, even it, though he may have the want mentally, his, his body was not and then when his body was put together, his mentality. Um, so, in terms of with your, your breed, Suzanne, um, having you obviously had other breeds of dogs as well, what made you gravitate back to them? We've had a discussion on a personal level, and what made you go back to Oz as well? I love the look of them. I, mean, I love the way they think, right? and I like training dogs that like to think and like to use their brain. Right. So, I like the way that they think and like to into their heads. Yeah. So that was, I think that's a thinking breed. Yeah. And I like thinking yeah. breeds. And I think that, that when, when people are thinking about, because I think definitely, um, 
people, more people certainly in domestic situations don't have border collies and, and that. Then that's not probably the first job they're going to gravitate to. And as a result, I think the, a clear thing, which is part of the discussion we've had, isn't it, Brian, that you have to pick the dog for your lifestyle. You have to pick the yeah. dog that you genuinely like oh, and you connect to. Yeah. And I think that sometimes people can forsake that for the sake of the sport. Because let's be truthful, all of us... None of us would have gone out and got, got the, the dogs, dogs that we do. wanted because yeah. they're not the dog yeah. for yeah. the job yeah. at all. Um, they're, they're, they're certainly not the first sport. They're not, it's a box, I mean, my box is from, you know, working, percent working lines. So I can't, I don't have that entire, he definitely has a, something within him. But the diff, the obvious choice would have been to go down that I've had before, I would have easily got one that would have been yeah. more um, susceptible to the job. But I, I chose him because when I like the breed, and when I, I, I remember people asking me, why did you get one? Because I like them. And I think that's, you've got to like the dog that you have, haven't you? Really? Um, as opposed to getting the dog for the task. Because I, to me... It depends, it depends on whether you love the sport yeah. and you actually want to do the sport and it's the sport that attracts you then you might get a dog for, for the job yeah but but we'll move closer. yeah because we've got quite a lot of background noise okay. but um but it depends on why you're training and what you're training for yeah but don't you think suzanne i don't know about you but um you know like say for example with punch there was a, a, a possibility you're right yeah um, there was a possibility that he may not have done the sport that i wanted because of his injury and that was very much a possibility um so uh, if i hadn't have wanted that dog because i liked that breed and that particular um i'm going to end up with a dog that was that couldn't have done it. if it was, do you know what i mean if it was purely for the job and the dog then can't do that particular sport you're ending up with a dog that you didn't get for, in my opinion, the right reasons. Do you not think so? Well, yes, yeah. but, but the sorts of people who don't think like that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, because we you, all, to be fair, we you, all you live with our dogs. Yes. So yeah. our dogs all live in the house. Yes. Yeah. My old dogs now get to sleep in the bed with yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So they're part of your family, they're part of your life. But then saying that, I mean, that aside, because, I mean, obviously you had your Rondell, um, but you gravitate back to Nozzy because they suit you. They suit me as you. a person. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's a really, really important thing to get the dog that you particularly like, isn't it? And it doesn't really matter if the sport says get X and you like that dog. And I, I urge people to really take that into consideration. Haven't you? You've got to like the dog that you, and don't allow the sport to then uh, deter you from getting your Australian Shepherd or your Boxer. You have to, but then part parcel of that is except the fact that your journey might be different to somebody. Yeah. It might be. Yeah. It will yeah. be. Yeah. Very different. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and fine. And you're going to have obstacles. Absolutely. You're going to get obstacles. You're going to get advantages and disadvantages, aren't you? You know, I would say... Where's the, where's the advantages? <laughs> I said, okay, let's take Aussies, for example, <laughs> the vegans. I, I personally think Aussies have a natural movement. Natural movement. So you would score over me with my, my little smooth coat of border collie or my smooth coat of manoir and with you know their little straight my man rather their straight shoulders you would have a distinct advantage because your dog would move naturally better than mine and they're also their structure because they've got you know leg in each corner and they're quite substantial and they've got a broad chest they're going to have a and they've got a coat so you're going to have a lot of things that would be an attribute to a sport like obedience but the trade-off is they go you through the retrieve article why would i want to pick it up you said go to that sendway mark and why would i want to do that effectively so there is pros and cons, isn't there? Really? Yeah. Whereas my man and might happily would love to do the trees and love to do some of those. Um, but I think a key thing is to enter into the relationship that you have eyes wide open, isn't it? Would you not, would you not agree? Yeah, yes. But you love the dog, you love the breed, you work with what you've got, yeah. and you do the best that you possibly can. Yeah. And like you say, there are going to be some advantages. Um, I don't know quite what advantages I'm going to have in one deal rate. Yeah. That's a fair <laughs> yeah, what an because achievement. Movement. What an achievement. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's just wait and wait see. And see. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm enjoying the, enjoying the training, but um, we could argue about obedience, about having movement. Yeah. We could get into yeah. the whole yeah. thing about yeah. does movement But really then let's take, okay, let's take the... It matters to me. Yeah, but let's say, okay, let's take not movement. Let's talk about the size of the dog versus, say, for example, if you had... Um, a chihuahua. A chihuahua to do hill work, that's going to be challenging, isn't it? Yeah. If that was your breed, your Australian Shepherd who's up yeah, here, yeah. there's an advantage. 
So I think the thing is you've got, you, you've got to, when you pick the breed of dog that you love or want, etc. the breed of dog that you, you I think that's really, really important. Is, yeah. Most um, important, because you're living with the dog. Aaron's watching. Is he? Hello, <laughs> Aaron! A little bit too serious. Um, uh, so is Anne's always here. <laughs> because I've never done this, and it's under duress. <laughs> and I just want to take slip one. away. <laughs> A lot of harassment to get you sandwiched yeah. sand in between yeah. two of yeah. us so you can't escape. So how, how about from your point of view then, Bryony, then? So as somebody that's new to competitive dog sport yeah. in, this, in this entity, and you decide to get, what what have been some of the, let's put our cards in, some of the frustrations and struggles that you have experienced from your perspective? There's an endless list. Yeah. So um, what, was, what was the one that you think that surprised you, that you thought, oh, I didn't... What's been the drive? drive? The drive. The challenge is the drive. The challenge is the drive. Yeah. Yeah. I thought... Um, Predatory drive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Predatory yeah, yeah, drive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, my previous dog has drive coming out of his ears. Right. And he's not made for dog sports or anything like that. He's yeah. a working dog through and through. Um, and I thought, naively, um, getting myself a uh, nice and bred working dog, yeah. I wouldn't have problems with drive, but I have. Yeah. Um, so that's been no guarantees. Yeah. No, there's no guarantees. Um, I find it frustrating because I feel like I've got a dog that's like, she's got naturally lovely movement and she would do nicely in a sport yeah. that could enhance that. Yeah. Um, but my sport just doesn't call for that movement whatsoever. Yeah. So that's, I find that frustrating because it's kind of something that I want to progress that I probably won't bother. Mm-hmm. Um, what else do I find frustrating? I mean, she surprised me in good ways in the sense that she is like the best dog to live with mm-hmm. I've ever had. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't expect that of her at all. Uh, I can't think what else she's... Yeah. How about you? What, what um, challenges and frustrations have you experienced then? Um, being patient. The yeah. Bonnendale taught me that. Mm-hmm. To wait, wait, wait. The time is not right. Yeah. The time is not right. I haven't really had a, many frustrations with the obedience section, but then I'm in my comfort zone. Yeah. Um, it's the bitey stuff um, that I'm frustrated with, that he's not ready yet. Yeah. I just know he isn't yeah. the dog that he's going to be. So even if I sat and left him for another six months um, and did nothing with him, I think he will be better. Yeah. I'm not going to leave yeah. yet because you need to tinker to away and yeah. sow, sow the seed. Yeah. Um, but I need time mm-hmm. and I want to get on and do it, mm-hmm. but the dog is not ready for yeah. it. Yeah. So I've got to be patient. Yeah, patience is a virtue, isn't it? Patience yeah. is yeah. the hardest thing. Patience is. I'm yeah. not a patient yeah. person at all. Yeah. But you, and, and, I mean, I've, with the dogs that I've had in the past, <coughs> certainly they, I learned that lesson. You know, and you, you just, and you know, I had a very good mentor that really was very much like, you can't push them when they're not ready. You have yeah. to go at the speed of the dog. And you know, she used to always say when they're growing, leave off, back off them, leave them alone. And you know, there was a lot of wisdom in those words. And, I, and I'm thankful that you know, I had that person to guide me as it were. Yeah. So let's talk, what's the, the things that you've surprisingly actually enjoyed that you did, that you go, I'm, that you are grateful for having that particular dog? What is the obedience? Like, I've never enjoyed training obedience before and right. I love it. Yeah, because um, of her movement. Because of her, and yeah. she just likes doing it. Yeah. Like whereas Gus just doesn't get it. It's just not his thing. Yeah. Like he he'll do it, but it's just not. She gets a kick out of it, which I really like. So that that I enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, what else do I enjoy about her? Just how lovely she is. Yeah. She's just definitely. a nice. Yeah. You know, she can switch it on yeah. and be a nice sport dog and be serious about stuff, and then she can just like you said earlier, she can just yeah land lovely. around on the floor yeah. with us all and like. Yeah. She's not a liability or a problem in any yeah. sense. Um, but she's been really fun. And I think actually, although there's been frustrations there, she's been a really nice dog for me to step into dogs with. Yeah. Yeah. Because I could have got something else and massively overdone it and then had something that I'm constantly yeah. battling to rein in. Yeah, it would be like a learner driver trying to learn how to drive a Ferrari yeah, and exactly. M25. It's just exactly. going to end in tears. Um, so how about, sorry. Well, yeah, no, go ahead. Uh, how about yourself? What have you actually gone? Do you know why I'm really enjoying this particular dog for this reason? But um, all my dogs have been lovely, although I don't talk very well of them. <laughs> um, he's a really nice, sane, nice dog. Yeah. Nice dog to live with, amenable, friendly. 
lovable, affectionate, take them anywhere. He's very well balanced. Um, he's a really sound tempered dog. Right. Um, and that is really nice. While his father was had a more edge. Had more edge, yeah. which was much more exciting to yeah. wear. Um, it came with its stuff. And it came with it, its stuff. So yeah. whilst he was, you know, a great sports dog, yeah. you kept your wits about, about you with him because he had more edge to him. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't the sort of dog that you could just take anywhere and let him off in the park and yeah. be absolutely um, fine with. So um, this dog is a nice, he'd make a brilliant pet dog. Yeah. Yeah. And that is I just so want, to do, so I want to do dog sports. It's good. So important. It's good. And it it's is so important. I would rather have a dog, although it's frustrating. It comes with you can have a brilliant sports dog. Yeah. Right. But the lifestyle that I lead would mean that it would make it difficult sometimes yeah. if the dog had a lot of age. Yeah. And I want a dog yeah. to be able to know he's absolutely fine with animals. He doesn't have a serious yeah. Yeah. chase yeah. problem. Yeah. Uh, prey. Yeah. Um, he's. 100% with all sorts of yep. people, um, and that that is nice. But it means that there doesn't seem to be much edge that you can tickle him up and get him agitated. Yeah. But I feel that it may come. He's naturally guarding now. Yeah. So little things like barking. When and he's only a baby. He's yeah, only what, he's what, he's ten right, months. Yeah. He, he is, he is no, you're going to see. There's going to be. Uh, that's another thing. You're going to see developmental changes, aren't you, with him? He's going to, you know, become more And the thing male. that I also enjoy, is the ch challenge is, when people say, you can't do it. Yeah, yeah. But that's and I've always, been, always been my thing. Yeah. Never <laughs> do that, yeah. I'll never do it with that dog. So that, and I might never do it with yeah. that dog. I might not. So that, 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 I that, love that, that challenge. Um, Aaron Who's says, Aaron, okay. what are your frustrations up to the top level? Um, Frustrations at the top level of any sport, I think, is um, sometimes it can be political. That can be frustrating. I find sometimes. that. Sometimes. Yeah, I think that always. It's not yeah. political in Monday, right? I think that I, I would say my experience with all top level sports is it is it, it's a, it's a test of character. It's a test of mental yeah. game. You know, I would say that the big the that's not the frustrations. It's actually kind of why we do it, isn't it? It's the challenge of overcoming your own. It's not just dog training. No, it, 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 once you get training, that level, is just a part yeah, of it. I think at that level, it's not only more about dog. But it's we not talked about that again so. earlier. Didn't yeah. we, yeah. Yeah. we were so talking that's about a whole other. Yeah. yeah, my frustration. Yeah. Sometimes it can be political. I think that could be frustrating, and you have to, that's part of the mental game. You have to you have to develop a mental mindset to deal with that. Yeah. I think the frustration is also at top level sometimes is, um, we were discussing, this isn't a frustration of top level, this is a frustration of dog sports. Your dog can do the most amazing round, uh, whatever, you know, whatever sport you're in. The dog can do everything to your um, goals, your aspiration, your tra training objectives, and you can get nowhere. And then you can, your dog can be absolutely horrendous in your mindset and the dog can be successful. And that has always been something that as a trainer, as a competitor, that you have to, that I've had to adjust my mentality to, um, that you have to take the, um, you know, the rough and the smooth, so to speak. I think that it is part of competing in dog sports that it's, it's, it's largely they're subjective, they're based on subjective. Agility and fly ball aren't, but the, all the other sports, certainly the ones that we're endeavouring to take partake in are subjective. So one person could look at your dog and think it's uh, that's amazing. I think that's you know maximum points, and somebody else could say no, that's absolutely horrendous. So I think that that subjective opinions can sometimes be frustrating, um, but you have to be true to what your goals and what your in any sport. This is not about other breeds. This is about training objectives versus competing. You have to, in my opinion, be true to what your goals are, what your agenda is, and strive for those as a trainer and as a competitor. And the goal, hopefully, is that it all the sun, the moon, everything aligns on that occasion. <laughs> Do you not agree? Yeah. What, um, yeah. if what I mean. advantages have you had from your boxer? Advantages? Um, so I have to say, the advantage I had with him is that he, he quite likes the bitey bit. 
you know, so for the sport that he does, you know, he, he was always okay on that. The obedience has been his biggest struggle because of a lot of physical like stamina, there's a big drama for him, his face shape definitely made getting him fit really, really challenging. Thank you to Pro Dub Raw. Um, he's like in amazing fitness now. Um, shameless plug there, Pro Dub Raw. But joking aside, I, I his breeders have been fantastic and they were really, really instrumental yeah. saying the breed needs you to do X. So that was really a thing. But the, the frustrations, physical stamina has been a real challenge. Um, but the advantages he had was definitely that he, he did he liked the bite he did. And he took he took to it quite well. Um, but so that was definitely an advantage, um, and he was actually he's quite he's quite he's quite methodical naturally on tracking. So whereas with the Malama, I think speed would have been an issue. Yeah. Uh, I know with Thriller speed was an issue, and Strut speed was an issue. The little tracking I did with them, but with Punch, bless him, that's where his methodical mindset is actually an asset because he's quite monotonous and he's natural. So those were definitely two advantages. Yeah. Shameless plug. The, the supplements. Yes. Pro dog yes. are a big influencer in what you were saying about endurance and stuff. Definitely. Like, I, I, like, and and like, really I wouldn't are. say unless I know this is that you hate this sort of stuff. I know. Like, it's I know. <laughs> yeah, but we're we're just you, should your your you should get your No, we're not. We're not. No. No. But genuinely, yeah. genuinely, like, we've made a massive it today. difference. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. Huge massive difference. Him is massive. I, I, I said that. I did a lot of work on his fitness, I will say that, but definitely. It, is his fitness level? He, he couldn't even throw a ball. At, like you, you couldn't chase after a ball yeah. more than two times now. Yeah. And that in itself, we think. Uh, well, what he really struggled with was if he ran a short distance, like say 20 meters, and you asked him to bark. He was like, "No, I can't do it." Yeah. You think? Yeah. And, and that has massively changed. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Not at the moment. Okay. Everyone's loving the conversation. <laughs> so. Um, yeah. Well, you, you, Suzanne's not like, Let's discuss like, yeah. Nama, get no. the dog you want, not the dog the sport yeah. dictates. Yeah. Um, also applies to some collies, not just other breeds. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I have collies, so I'm not anti-collie. Please don't listen. I want to be clear on that. I have Malinois. <laughs> you know, I've had Malinois. I've had a working line German Shepherd. I've had really, really, really high dry dogs, and they've been absolutely fantastic to train. Yeah. I've had dogs that, like my Spitz, no natural drive at all. But I got my spits because I wanted spits. I got my boxer because I wanted this boxer. I yeah. got my Labrador because, you know, I, I like the breed. So I, um, it, my my thing is always be our, and there's a million other breeds that I'd love to get, you know, and I'd love to train and I'd love to see what that, like I'd love a Dalmatian one day. You know, I love that breed of dog, but, but you, I love to look at them. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, that's like, you have to like the dog that you own. Yes, there is nothing like a dog that has that little bit of a spark about it. It's like an adrenaline rush. You know, to have that dog that has that really, and looks with you with that expression of, yeah, let's go again. But, but it's, it's also nice not to have that, like, especially domestically. Yeah. 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 Like, like the dogs that I've had, that absolutely. I mean, like, Punch definitely has an edge. Strut definitely had an edge. Thrilla definitely had an edge to her, you know. And they were, you know, and Swag, my, my German Shepherd, she, she was neurotic. You know, she was amazing and she'd work like, her work ethic was incomparable. Yeah. But she was, she, she, I had to work on things like not being hysterical at doorways or yeah. like don't scream your head off hysterically. Like to, then that was when I was a police officer. And I, like at six o'clock in the morning or five o'clock in the morning, she'd be like ricocheting off the crate from the back door to go out. And it goes, so you, I had the harder thing with her was domesticating her, having her so that you could just live with the dog. And it, honest to God, it was absolutely insane. You know, oh. but, but working through that stuff. Nick. Yeah. Uh, Hilling, who is my new trainer that I was talking about, yep. said she did a workshop with you yesterday and loved it. Um, Aaron says, uh, what, is, what is the importance of mental resilience in the trainer when it doesn't go to plan and you have to start again? I know I struggle with this because it feels like you've failed. Oh, that's a good one. That's, that's a good, a good question. question. That's a good question. Can I, I can't answer that. Mental resilience. <coughs> Last bottle of wine. How does it go? You're going to fail far more times than you succeed. Yeah. It's all part of it. You might just be up and the... uh, it might just be a blip, but um, you can't expect for those dog trainers to smooth whatsoever. In fact, I, I honestly feel that um, it's expect problems and then go. Yeah. So I don't, I don't generally feel defeated. I know that if something's going wrong, I've trained it well, but I've trained it to the best of my ability, and I just know that I need to be better. Yeah. 
I think everybody, the assumption is, is that the line from A to Z will be just really straight. And yeah. that if you've seen it Never through those up and downs until you inevitably reach your goal. I, I, I can honestly say there's not a dog that I've trained that I feel that I could not do, have done it better. So I think that that's a given, that you will always look back reflecting on that particular dog and hopefully glean from it. You have to accept that when you are in... <laughs> taking, yes, I'm drunk. Okay, good. 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 Um, I think that when you are embarking on a a a sad training session, is that yeah, is that why you're drunk? Yeah, you can do because you remember. Yeah. If when you are embarking on a, a a journey into a new sport or a sport with a new dog, it doesn't really matter. You you are absolutely going to encounter challenges and frustrations, and you are going to question why you did it, yeah. and you are going to wonder why you didn't get the bad of yeah. the box or the straight shepherd. But that that. The irony is, is that part of it. that's what's part of it, and, and, and I, the irony is that's all. If it was easy, yeah. it if it was be, easy, it wouldn't be challenging. It wouldn't be challenging, and it wouldn't be actually having the yeah. troubles yeah. and overcoming yeah. them that yeah. is the greatest yeah. thrill. Yeah. And the irony is, is that when you reach that summit goal, whatever you would get that certificate. That it isn't about the certificate, or the rosé, or the trophy. It's about what that represents. Don't mention the journey. You and know, I think no, the journey. Yeah. But, if, but what I'm saying is, if that that piece of card with the green, it represents all the hours and you know, sweat and tears. And, tears. and yeah. it is, and it is that. And it, it's got nothing to do with the piece of paper. It's what it represents. And I, I, I know it sounds cliche, but it is very much about like savoring those those challenges. Because when, I mean, like there's times, but like the other day, I went out and I like I was so frustrated with my dog for not being able to do what I was asking to do and I was like in the end it was like I pitch black I was like super frustrated I put the dog away regrouped and you know vented a little bit got it off my chest picked myself up and moved on because what are your choices to give up and stop or to think differently and like to me that it's it's I would rather think differently okay what is what can I change how can I be a better dog player what is this how can I overcome this struggle, this challenge, this whatever? Uh, you know. I, I think, like, I can't speak from a competitive point of view, but I think it's so important to surround yourself with people that are, yeah, we talk that about are positive and yeah. can help you as well. Because yeah. sometimes stuff can just, like today, the things that we've done, stuff can just become yeah. a little bit unclear, and yeah. it's like you can't see through the yeah. trees, yeah. and yeah. It, it, it's just because you're so bogged down in something, yeah. um, and I think it really helps to have like just meet up and train together and do something yeah. like that. Yeah. And it's like a lot of people don't do that. Yeah. Like, it's madness. It's like, like you know, I will give you my earliest experience. So I, I did a BH with my dog, which is the first very first level um, of competition with my dog. And it was an absolute disaster. For various reasons. It, it, the, the reasons are really irrelevant, but the, it was an absolute disaster. So as I'm bringing back, as I'm coming back, I realised it was funny enough with Suzanne and I, you know, I, I obviously said she'd been watching me I vented it, got it off my chest, and you know, and, and, and thankfully Suzanne was like, okay, like, pick yourself up, stop being a baby about it, send me the video, and let's just process and think about it logically. And then we thought, you know, between Suzanne and myself, and you know, and looking at it, I formed there some was, sort of plan. Yeah, you there know, there was there, there was, was gaps, there was holes, there was and gaps. that's the truth. You go, what the competition exposed was actually there was we things I needed to do better. Yeah. I need to do, do better. And it, you know, there's there's so many cliches phrases about failure versus success. You are going to fail. You have to be prepared to push through that. And ironically enough, you know, it, this, uh, I messaged a friend of mine saying it's an absolute disaster, and he very graciously messaged me the next day and said, "Oh, you know, what, how do you feel today?" And I said, "Determined," because what else is my option? Yeah. You know, what else do I choice do I have? I can go. I can, you know. So boo hoo woo is me and walk away. And there's to be honest, there's no failing in saying, do you know what? This is not for me. Yeah. It, the, that is not that is not there is nothing to say, do you know what? This is just not my this is not for me. I'd rather just take my dog for a long walk or train it and not compete with it. Yeah. But if you are gonna do dog sports, you have to develop a level of resilience. Again, surround yourself by the right people is a really, really good, yeah. good one. And you know, I as, as we've discussed about mental game um, and developing a level of resilience. And look, and the other thing is to look at your training objectively and with, if you can, without emotion. Yeah, because I think emotion can cloud judgment, but often, you know, it's a very emotive thing. To, oh, I, my dog is this, it's all da or, you know, or oh, I'm useless, or da da. When you actually look at it, you go, actually, there is, there is positives I can take with it. I can improve this, I can change this, this can be better. 
Um, and if you've done all that and you've given it your best shot and it doesn't work out, then you can say, I tried, I tried my best. Yeah. Yeah, that's really um, good, yeah. Someone's asked uh, if your last dog was successful, um, sometimes the expectation can hold you back. How do you cope with that? Change the sport. Change the sport. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, so, again, like um, anybody in dog training will know the name Sylvia Bishop and who is, who is a, a, an incredibly, incredibly successful dog trainer competitor and, you know, she made a multiple champions and you know, was a huge influence and mentor and the wisest words amongst others, one of the things was, she said to me was, um, whenever she got a new puppy, she would all, she would go up to, you know, but, but she'd say, tell, always tell this little story, she'd take the puppy, go to the mirror, she'd look in the mirror and say, well, who are you, and, you know, this, I'm this, and you're that, and uh, she'd introduce herself, and she would say, I, and she would treat it as if it was a blank slate. So it didn't matter that she'd made up multiple champions and won a hundred tickets and made, had dogs at crafts and made up one crafts. She was like, this is a new journey, you know, and I don't oh, know the journey word, I know you don't like the J word, but this is a new, this is a new puppy, I know nothing about you, and it's why she was so successful so long, because she didn't, she's always said you're only as good as the dog on the dad, you're only as good as the dog on the end of your lead, and you know, you, you, unless you're prepared, if you compare your past successes, mm. your, it's too much pressure. Mm. You know, and, and you're, uh, you know, dogs, you're only as good as the dog on the day, and the other thing is, because you are successful with that dog doesn't mean that the person is a great dog. There's so many people that have, you know, not every dog's going to be a champion. Mm. Not every dog is going to be a world class dog. You, that's part of the parcel of it. You know, if you have a special dog, enjoy the dog, the, the ride. Yeah. Um, the, the, the ride, you know, enjoy the ride, because they're few and far between. Uh, but it doesn't mean that you can't be successful within that dog's capability. Uh, what would be the best way to end a training session? Would you just say that it's? Uh, you would you just say yeah. good dog, Alcohol. or would you have uh -huh. a? They mean for the dog, not for you. Uh -huh. Or would you just have a game for a happy ending? I think depends on what you're working on. Differently, don't they? It just depends on what you're working on. Sometimes you, I like the other day. I just went, okay, I'm gonna put you in the van and go for a very long <laughs> ride. Cry, yeah, cry, rain, yeah, cry. cry. I was crying in the fetal position <laughs> and rocking. There was a lot of rocking involved. It depends very much on what you're working on and where you're at. Sometimes you want to end it on a good note. Sometimes, like this afternoon, Suzanne's puppy, she finished, she was lovely. She let him build the van for a moment, and then she went, because she didn't want to just go back, back in the van. Yeah. Sometimes you want to leave the dog and want, oh, let's run back to the van, you know, take yeah. the toy back. It depends very much. There is no, there is no, I don't always have, it doesn't always have to end on a good note. No. I think that's a misconception about reinforcement. An old mantra of traditional training was you always had to end it on a good note. Not necessarily the case. Yeah. And actually, we, I had this discussion with someone else a while ago, and um, like in terms of finish cues and stuff like that to end the training session. Yeah. And sometimes ending on a good note would really poison what you've just done. Yeah. Um, so you have to be careful, I think, in that term. So I think try and think be fairly neutral about it. Yeah, you, you, it's about reinforcement. Yeah. Uh, what are you reinforcing, and if what you, the dog did is worthy of reinforcement by all means. If the dog doesn't do as you asked, and you just say, "Okay, dog," the dog, there's no, you could, you might take it for a walk. I might not be yeah. particularly happy with that moment of what the dog did, for what, and I might not give it a treat or a click. But I could take it for a little pot or down, let it have a wee, and put it back in the van. It doesn't mean the dog is bad. It just yeah. means that I, it's not worthy of reinforcement. Um, have any of you ever had an issue with a dog from a training point of view that you haven't been able to crack? I have. Okay, go on my little rescue hand has a capacity like a very set capacity of about five or six things that he can learn and genuinely it's like filling a tank up you put one thing in and it works it comes out. it doesn't all come out but when you've got to six Maximum. if you put seven in one drops out and he literally he has a capacity and that's fine because he's a pet dog and Really so old. what was the question again? Um, have you ever had a training problem that you haven't been able to crack? No. I can't crack that. And to be quite honest, that's so Loads of, loads of things. Um, but I put sticky plaster on yep. and um, go you train badly. badly. Just train badly. Yep. And I've sometimes I've decided again. Yeah. I'm going to accept what I've got yep. and know that it's going to be okay for other people. Yep. Um, or I've gone, this is absolute shit, yep. and I'm going to ditch it, yep. which is what I'm at with my DC. I love my DC, and I don't know whether to accept what I've got because I like it, or whether 
they're all going to hate it. Yeah. Why you never show someone you don't think Because I like, I really like it. Well, it's nice to be the species, yeah, yeah. so it's not being smart. It's not So there's lots and lots of things. I don't think that there's anything that I've. This is my nature. There's don't think anything that I've trained. I've been really happy with. Yeah, I can have always have done yeah. better. Every dog, like I said, every dog I've ever owned, I thought if I can have my better, time again, yeah, I would do that better. differently. Yeah. But then I think that's part of the journey, isn't it? Yeah. But the, the yeah. thing I hope is that. I haven't made the same I made mistake. The same mistake. Same, I make yeah. new yeah. ones. Yeah, yeah. You make other people. I keep on making, making new mistakes. ones. And I, I, that's the thing that I hope that I'm conscious of. I haven't made the same error with this, that. And um, yeah. And I, I would say, in terms of the majority of issues that I've had, I would say, I've even if it's a big, massive cock up, I've some way managed to improve it. I haven't yeah. always fixed it. But I've definitely improved it to the point where I go, like Suzanne said, it's passable. You know, like yeah. my, my man in my retreat, my first man in my retreat was diabolical. It was just horrendous. And I patched out to the point where it was passable. But I was like, bloody hell, my next her retreat was, yeah. like, I was like fanatical about it. But there was things with her I made mistakes on. So, yeah. um, like, she had a very technically good retreat, but then I caught something else up with her. And I so, guess the more, like, you were talking about us having different breeds and stuff. Yeah. The more you open it up, you open your training up in terms of getting new breeds and adding new stuff in, the more you open yourself up to make more mistakes. Yeah, but the more dogs you have. Yeah. The law exactly. of average says the more dogs you have, <laughs> the more you have the same you breed the yeah. whole way through, yeah. and you know the line and that's it, yeah. and you kind of close it off to those. You're still going to make mistakes, of course you are, but, um, the, but that's what makes you learn, isn't it? I, 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 I think that people are so, I think one of the biggest things that people, in terms of dogs, they're so afraid of making mistakes. So you get like perfection paralysis and everything Denise calls yeah. Denise Fenzie calls it. People are so afraid of making mistakes and getting things wrong, they don't do anything. They get stuck. They get stuck. I think that's why, so I've been told off today, because not told off, but you can drill me a bit, on um, not rewarding everything. Mm -hmm. Because I want to set everything up to be perfect. Mm -hmm. um, it, can't it doesn't be. exist. No, and it can't be. And that's why I, yeah, and you can so take, right. Take, take, take a risk. Yeah. Sometimes you need to actually go, Let's say, let's just try this. Mm. And if your dog is open and also doesn't worry about failure, mm. it might work. Doesn't mean that it's sorted, but you go, I took a risk. Mm. Oh, gosh, yeah, it's a, uh, it was. Or you can actually say, I took took a risk and it didn't and it didn't pay off, but you haven't damaged your dog. And, and you may learn it. something from you it. You may learn yeah. something yeah, from absolutely. it. Yeah. You know, putting your dog in a situation that it, it could go right yeah. or go wrong. But the dog's world doesn't fall apart, and that's actually really important. Yeah, yeah and that's resilience. Get, isn't that's it? resilience. Yeah. Resilience uh, to like failure I as a handler and a dog. Sorry, interrupting you. Resilience to failure as a handler yeah. and as, as a dog is a very important part. Yeah, I think that, but the, the conversation of you know failure, frustration, and stress, and dog training it can be very controversial. Oh, and that dodgy? Yeah. 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 Well, no, no, no. What, yeah. what I'm saying is, I, like you and I are both. I don't mind my dogs failing, and getting it wrong. Like, I mean, I trained yesterday. I did live yesterday and I trained my team last year about 20 25 minutes. It was crappy training. I was doodling and experimenting and there was a lot of things. I was yeah. trying to whittle down something and I was lumping, I was, you know, but it was conscious. And uh, the dog was getting things wrong. There was a lot of failure, there was some punishment. I didn't reward the dog, you could yeah. argue. But it's fine, she came back today and she did it because I'd gone away and gone, okay, I'm gonna work on. So sometimes you need, I think, if I had gone waiting for her to be, if I had planned my perfect session, I'd never have trained it. Yeah. I went, do you know what? I'm gonna just see what happens. Yeah. And it no. doesn't do the dog any favours to get everything right every single time either, because no. then the dog can't cope with failure. And I think there's definitely like this. When Susan, Suzanne and I stopped training dogs, I think that you there was a little bit of rope learning, so you just went and did as you know, and and yeah. somebody else is teaching you guide you. I think now there's so much knowledge out there. I think sometimes people can be overwhelmed by the knowledge. Yeah. Um, and I think sometimes then as a result of being overwhelmed by knowledge, they they don't want to get it wrong yeah, themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think sometimes there is nothing, which is why you know having a coach of some sort, they can go hold your hand and say, "It's okay, come on, let's yeah. yeah. And also make put a little bit of some pressure of saying, "Well, I want to see this. I want to see that happen this week. Yeah. I want to see improvement. I want to see you yeah. push this on." And, and you actually, need that. You kind of need your, like Joe said it to me a million times. You need your friends and your groupies to comfort you when you've had a crappy training session or whatever. Yeah. And then you kind of need your mentor there to push you out of your yeah. comfort zone every now and then. And your friends can't really do yeah. that. But that's just so, yeah. that's priceless. Yeah. That is. And really. like Suzanne and I train uh, 
several people that we both trained, yeah. and we've, we've both had collective discussions about they, they needed to be like, come on, with, they, their yeah. yes, yes, with their permission. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, let's be clear about that. Yeah. We've both had discussions that they can both How get. How can we move with forward mind. with this? Yeah. Yeah, this because they get stuck at being perfect. Yeah. You know, and and they, they both of them needed to just say, come on, no, you go and yeah. you know, you know. Yeah. So I, I think that that people don't get stuck on being perfect because it's never going to happen. No. Never. Yeah. And, uh, and don't stick around on something for too long because I've done that recently. Yeah. Like, yeah. just not cracked on with stuff. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just, like, you can yeah. sometimes yeah. become too fixated on and it, I know, you know. Sometimes yeah. you can walk away from it, <laughs> leave it when it's absolutely shit. Walk away from it and go, I'm not going to touch it. Yeah. Come out a couple of months later yeah. and you haven't trained it at all. They feel like something, don't they? Yeah. 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 And it's sorted. Oh, you haven't yeah. done anything. anything. It's just sorted. But then, don't you think that sometimes when you can obsess about something, try and get perfect, you, you make it worse thing. and worse and yeah, worse. Oh yeah, yeah. Worse absolutely. It comes before you it's know like it. It's a big drama. Horses. And, like I always did with my working sheep dogs and stuff. Like you, like break them in and then you go and leave them for yeah. a while. And that mm. is like, no, 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 then you bring them back to it, and yeah. it's like they've had time to process it. Mm. And and we need to do the same, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And um, sometimes you come back a couple of months later and it's still shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just go out in the dark and, and get dressed. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. go in the fetal position. Yeah. Um, so, is there any questions? Final questions? Can um, I go now? <laughs> I'll try. I'm I'll, 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 I know you pinned me to the chair. Learning. I'm making mistakes. Can our teacher switch on and switch off cues? He has a video for how he teaches these. I've started using them, they're excellent. Yeah, I think they are like the best. Yeah. That I think he gives them. clarity. You know, he gives yeah. clarity, um, and I think it creates a dog that, you know, my dogs understand, but I've switched you on, that, that time went is indefinite, so then... Ooh, you don't want a dog working all the time, you can't stand No, 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 you, no, you want to have it on and off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Or a dog that switches off after three seconds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm good. Cool. Okay. Um, we good? Good discussion. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll ask Suzanne every second of it. I'll ask Suzanne to do it again. <laughs> Got a nice question for you. Can you ask Mal, how do you cure mouthing on a retreat? Who said ask that? Jenny Lund. Oh yeah, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> no, the best of questions, where, which, he, which hand do I hold by leading? That's the real goal. All right, we're going to love you and leave yeah. you. Hopefully you've enjoyed this discussion. I'm going to let Suzanne off the hook. Thank you very much for joining us. You can get back to Strictly. Uh, yeah, cool. Bye. 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 Bye.